Okay, the US federal government shutdown has ended. It took 45 days and several meetings between uh, President Trump and his Republican supporters and, and the Democrats and those Republicans that oppose him. Um, the worrying thing is it's, it's more than, than just the, build, the, the wall policy, the border, 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 Mexico border policy that Trump has. This is an issue that's been ongoing for years within the US federal government. Um, it happened under Obama, Bush, Clinton, Bush Sr., Reagan. I believe all about the Jimmy Carter, there's been federal government shutdowns since the late 70s, early 80s. This is an ongoing thing that has happened every couple of years there's a government shutdown. It's just this one was the longest. It beat the second longest by about 12 days. The issue with the federal government shutdown is 800,000 workers are now owed back pay, which means there's going to be an additional cost on top of the cost already lost to the US economy, which is varying between three and six billion US dollars wiped off the US economy, of which two billion of that is lost forever. So that's a big issue. This back pay is going to cost money, and whatever whoever's the next president is going to have the same issues of government funding that the previous presidents have had. The longest, the second longest shutdown was under Clinton, uh, about 20 odd years ago, I think 25 years ago if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, around the time of his impeachment for the Monica Lewinsky scandal, I think that's roughly when it happened, not for those reasons, but it happened then. The effects of this government shutdown, and in fact any government shutdown, are a lot more different than they would be here in, in Europe, where I live. Um, there are more private sector companies involved with running the US government under contract than here in in Europe. Uh, they do um, the, the the way the US government and 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 its subsidiary state governments are formed. There is a lot of private enterprise involved with contracting. Um, they don't. The, the social welfare system is different. Uh, the health system all private. There's there's no state funded healthcare uh, in the US. It's all private. Whereas over here in Europe we have state um, health systems. That's a prime example of how the US government is and, 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 and services are different. However, there is a Department of Health in the US, and yes, if that's shut down, issues will happen with the private sector healthcare. Um, it has a knock on effect. The issue is some states are more reliant in the US on, on federal workforce and, and federal jobs than others. So, states like Wyoming with, with the national parks like Yellowstone. Um, and the fact that the the state capital is is not just a, a small city in Cheyenne, but it's heavily reliant on the federal government for employment prospects for people. Uh, same in the states like Vermont, smaller states like Vermont that have small populations. Again, they're heavily reliant on the federal workforce for jobs. The federal government gives a lot of people jobs, and the state government. Other other states and other cities are less reliant on on the federal government uh, for uh, to be employed. So states like California, massive private sector employment. States like New York, massive private sector employment. Places like Florida, however, are mixed. You've got the NASA Cape Canaveral Kennedy Space Station. That's NASA. It's a government agency. Florida is an interesting one. It's a very mixed. There's a lot of federal workforce. There's also a lot of private sector. But the private sector does a lot of contracts for the US government. Also, when federal workers aren't getting paid, they're not spending money. In, in their local supermarket, um, at the local record store, in restaurants. Uh, they're not buying goods and services. They're not getting their car service. They might have gone, right, we'll, we'll keep the car under wraps. We'll, we'll walk everywhere. They, they won't necessarily be buying consumer goods. They don't have the money to do so. That's going to have a knock-on effect for those cities that are, A, have big federal government um employees, a large amount of federal government employees, that's going to have a knock-on effect for the private industry. Also, over here in Europe, we have a lot of US personnel who work for the federal government, be it in the military sense or civilian sense, who are based over here. And their pay has also been affected. They're either on half pay or, or they're working unpaid. So it also has a knock-on effect over here abroad, uh, especially in some parts of the UK where I live. Uh, the eastern side of the UK, um, Areas like Norfolk and Suffolk, there's a lot of American Air Force personnel uh, and their civilian contract support staff as well. Um, they're going unpaid right now. Well, they were going unpaid uh, until until this morning. Um, they're not then going out to spend money in the local communities, in the local shops. Um, they're not ordering uh, consumer goods. You know, um, they're budgeting more. They're spending less. That has a slight knock on effect for a small village or town where they are based. 
because these small villages and towns around these US Air Force bases are heavily reliant on the US personnel spending money in the local economy. So local shop owners, local businesses will feel a knock-on effect, uh, not just here in Europe, but across the US when federal government employees aren't getting paid. Um, and it has a massive knock-on effect. And, and the thing is, this is a temporary fix. The agreement they have come to is temporary. In two weeks' time, we could be back here again having the same debate going. We have another game government shutdown. But for now, the US federal government shutdown that lasted 45 days has been ended. We shall have to see what the next couple of weeks holds and if any more talks take place. But the issue is there could be a further federal government shutdown in a couple of weeks' time in the middle of February. So I, 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 and, and, and we've seen this under Obama, we've seen this under George W. Bush, we've seen this under Clinton, we saw it under Bush Senior, uh, George Bush, and we've seen it under Reagan. I think also under Jimmy Carter as well, there were government shutdowns. So we've seen this for 40 years. Every so often there is a few days. Sometimes the shutdowns last a couple of days. Sometimes they last a couple of weeks. In this case, five weeks. It's a record. And, and, and it's an, I think it's something that... It's divided opinion. I think both sides are at fault. Um, the fact that it took this long uh, to open up discussions and actually at the end of those discussions come to a temporary fix. The next president, whoever it is, be it, be it Trump wins the second term or a Democrat or another Republican wins the nomination, whoever the next president is, is going to still face the same issues of, of government funding um, and, and working out you know, how to keep the US federal government going, because we've seen constant issues in every presidency in my lifetime and, and before, where the government shuts down for a few days at a time, sometimes a few weeks and sometimes longer. And this is the longest ever. And we run the risk of a second shutdown being longer than this one. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe, place your thoughts below, and I'll have some more videos for you soon.